Welcome back. Very appropriate music as we enter the unknown here. T-Bob Bear here along with Jake Hester and this is off the bench right now. Remember, I just put a YouTube video up that asked the question, can Jameis Winston be Drew Brees? And the point of this is to point out that we all have a lot of thoughts on Winston and how good or, well, for most people, how bad he is when... Well, look, you compare him and Breeze's first five years in the league and some shocking similarities start to develop. Let's talk to him, man. And, and I think maybe in that video, Danny, or maybe on air or something, I called myself, or maybe it was on Twitter. I called myself John the Baptist. And then Jameis 101 hit me up. The true John the Baptist. Jameis 101 is the author of Jameis 101. Um, we, 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 I, I don't know his name beyond that. He chooses to remain anonymous in his crusade to clear the way for Jameis Winston. One of one, what's up, dude? Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> How you doing, brother? I'm happy to be here. Okay, so uh, let's start here. Uh, on your Twitter, in, in, in the book, lot, you talk about Jameis Winston derangement syndrome. What is Jameis Winston derangement syndrome? I mean, basically, people have, if you're talking about fans, they have cognitive dissonance. So they've been conditioned by the media to think one way about Jameis. And it's all built on false narratives rather than truth, rather than hard data. And so when they see my tweets, they literally freak out. I mean, I get some of the nastiest DMs you'd ever want to see. People going at my wife, my children, my religion, just whatever. And it's all over statistical tweets about Jameis that are purely factual. And people see them, and, and they just lose their minds because they've been conditioned to think one way. And when the, um, you know, the truth hits them, that they don't know what to do with it. So, you know, any, anybody out there who doesn't know what cognitive dissonance is, just, you know, Google it, read it. it. It's a perfect description of what fans go through when they learn the truth about Jameis. And then as far as the media, the media has been at war with Jameis for years. Um, and you can just watch the segments. And if you know uh, sort of about the background with the stats on Jameis, the way the media talks about him, you, you recognize how biased it is. Uh, for example, Max Kellerman on ESPN. You know, he will talk many times about young quarterbacks, and, and he, he said on the record that the two things that he judges a young quarterback on to see if a young quarterback's good is red zone and third down, because those are the highest leverage moments. And, if, and this is why he raves about Dak. However, he'll turn around and say Jameis Winston is both the most overrated quarterback in the NFL and one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL. Jameis Winston, since entering the league as a 21-year-old kid, thrown into the fire immediately to be the savior of the worst team in football is number one in the entire NFL in third down conversion rate. Yeah. Number one. He's ahead of Breeze. He's ahead of Brady. He's ahead of everybody. The only guy that is ahead of him, if the if you lower the sample size, would be Mahomes. But with the sample size at like 700 attempts, Jameis is number one in the entire NFL since entering the league. And in the red zone, and you know, I agree with Kellerman that those are the two highest leverage moments, third downs, red zone. In the red zone, Jameis has a better touchdown-to-interception ratio than Aaron Rodgers, than Russell Wilson, Bruh. than just about anybody. And so, you know, I kind of clap back when I hear people talk about Jameis's decision-making being his biggest issue. A, qu a quarterback that truly has a decision-making issue or is just a dumb quarterback is not the third-down god of the NFL, and he's not going to have a higher touchdown-to-interception ratio in the red zone than Aaron Rodgers. That's not going to happen. Jameis's issue is that every coach he's ever been with, and I'm really hoping Sean Payton will be different, every coach he's ever been with sees his arm talent, sees what he can do, and says, hey, I'm going to ask this kid to do crazy stuff. And Clyde Christensen, the Bucks, you know, um, quarterback coach, he, he laughed at Bruce Arians about that. He did an interview, and he laughed about it. And he said Bruce would just ask Jameis to do ridiculous things, and Jameis was never going to say no. Um, and, and I'm hopeful that he's, he's finally with a coach a legitimate genius in Sean Payton that, yeah. that schemes guys open, that doesn't ask the quarterback to do everything with his arm. So I'm very, very uh, looking forward to this season. I mean, some shocking numbers already here being revealed by one of one. Uh, the third down, I had, I, I had no idea, or the red zone success. I, I do agree with you on the Arians thing, though, right? I mean, that was very much, look, no risky, no biscuit. Let's just put it all out there and the quarterback, maybe putting a bit more on the quarterback or asking him to do a bit more than he should. What about this? Where, why do you think, have you, because obviously this is something that you are dealing with daily and you're fighting this battle. Uh, where do you think the root of the cognitive dissonance is? Like why when a guy, because that's what started this all, was me just sitting there and thinking, wait, this guy's been a Heisman winner, a natty champion, a rookie of the year, a pro bowler, an NFL passing leader, in his first five years in the league and everybody thinks he sucks. 
Why is that? Like, wh- where does that take place? Well, the media is all about stories. They're, they're not about truth. And, you know, when I say media, I'm not talking about every single person in the media. But for, for uh, the main part, the media is about stories. And they create villains and they create heroes. Um, and I use a lot of, like, historical quotes, you know, about the media sometimes in my tweets to, to sort of help people, you know, recognize what's going on. That they're not just reporting facts. They're not reporting data. There's not a lot of deep analysis that goes into most media segments. It's all just crafting a story and either building somebody up or tearing somebody down or having a, you know, it's kind of like wrestling, people that watch wrestling. I mean, they have heels. Yep. And the media decided long ago that Jameis Winston News sells better if he's the villain. And it's never stopped. I mean, even after he started a COVID hotline in Tampa, get up on ESPN, ran a segment bashing him. I mean, who, who does that? Like, there, there's not another quarterback in the history of the NFL as slighted and slandered by the media as Jameis, and it's not close. I mean, they and even even local media in Tampa, the day he was drafted, you know, the Tampa Bay Times, his own local newspaper there, ran an article, and they're like, like it or not, you're stuck with him. And they had hit, I know some of the media members, they had hit pieces written before anything happened, just ready to roll out for Jameis. Uh, so I, I want to ask the question, do you have like maybe a comp uh, of a quarterback that's gone through this, that, that has gone through, you know, he's always up against the wall before he even gets started? There really is. I mean, like, I, I am a quarterback historian, and I've studied quarterbacks for decades. Um, there really is no one else that is, has had the media against him as much as Jameis. You know, people will throw out a guy like Kaepernick, but no, that, that's not even remotely close. One, they're not the same type of quarterback. They don't have the same statistical resume in yeah. the least. They didn't come into the league with the same fanfare and, you know, accomplishing the same amount of things. Right. Um, but Cap, you know, he had he had some severe detractors, but then he also had guys that would just overly praise him. And it's not like that with Jameis. It's like everybody was just waiting to, to nail Jameis. And then some guys that would come out and tell a, a good story about Jameis or something, they wouldn't be invited back. Mark Schlereth is one of them on, on ESPN. He was brought in for a segment, and he raved about Jameis's leadership and told a story that nobody had ever heard before. I, I knew about it. Um, but he told the story that, uh, there was a hurricane that was coming into Tampa, and the the uh, the Glazer family was going to fly Jameis out, and Jameis refused to go unless all his teammates were flown out. And he told that story, and then you know I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm waiting to see them bring Schlereth back when they talk about Jameis. Never happened. They, they yeah. <laughs> he wasn't yeah. invited back. Um, so I mean, there's there's definitely quarterbacks that uh, you know among the fans are very underrated. Um, Matthew Stafford is one. Matthew Stafford is another guy that I've been sort of defending for years just with truth and with data because people were really down on him simply because he played for an absolute garbage organization. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would hit them with some stats too and and some cognitive dissonance would happen. But Matthew Stafford has never had people in the media just out to get him. That hasn't happened. You know, he's had some guys that have, that have also put, you know, some truth out there about his data. Um, Donovan McNabb is somebody uh, you know, who went through a lot with the media. But a lot of that is because he was in Philadelphia and, right. <laughs> and they have a tough media. Yeah, it's brutal. So there's there's just nobody really like Jameis, and that was part of the reason I wrote the book is because he's such a fascinating character study. And the way he himself personally deals with the media, it impresses me. I mean, I'm an Orthodox Christian theologian, so even I get impressed at him, and, and I'm thinking there's no way I'd deal with it that way. I, I couldn't. And... I mean, he, he treats the media with, like, legitimate kindness and yeah, love. He's like, and he, yeah, know, yeah. he knew in Tampa that they were absolute snakes, that they had hit pieces written, that they would lie to his parents in the stands, you know, and then turn around and hug them. I mean, the stories just, they don't stop. They, they, don't, they don't end. Um, there was a, a reporter there at ESPN again um, in Tampa that, you know, used the birth announcement of his child to just trash him. When his little of, son of, of, ja- of Jameis's child. Yes, yes. When little Malachi was born, she used that to just trash Jameis. What'd she say? Um, she she announced the birth of his child in the ESPN article, and then just went into a huge thing about his past and, and just bringing up, which again, they're yeah. you know unsubstantiated allegations. And I kind of came after her a little bit for that, and you know, ever since then, she didn't really like me. And then later on, when Arians got hired, she took Arians' quotes took a word out, put a word in, mm. and spun it out there as the truth of a quote. And I went after about that, and she flipped out. And then two Tampa Bay Buccaneers employees, you know, came to my defense and said, no, Jenna, her name's Jenna Lane. She's no, Jenna, you can't do that. And uh, so, I mean, yeah, it just never ended. I'm, I'm really happy to see him in Nolens. Um, 
I, I've interacted with a lot of the media, you know, since he's been there, and they've all seemed to be really cool. So <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah, look, man, I it's it's like I said, I, I I didn't even know about the book or anything until I randomly started down this wormhole, and it is interesting how deep it kind of goes. So you gave us the red zone third down numbers. I'm sure you've got kind of more numbers like locked and loaded constantly. So so what are some more uh, the data? What's some more data that points to because because people think that like. It, it seems wild to me that people are of the opinion that he's not even a legitimate NFL starting quarterback. And like, not even if he's good or bad, people people will tell you that he's not even a legitimate starter. Right, right. And that that, that goes to sort of the, the media bias and what people are, are led to believe about a player. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, giving some actual numbers to those, the third down in red zone, because I'll say that a lot, and people just, they just don't believe it. Um, but since 2015, with a minimum of 700 third down plays, so it's not going to count a guy who's been out there for 40 snaps. Um, Jameis is number one in the NFL in converting third downs, 43.6 percent. Damn. You know, Drew Brees was third, Tom Brady was fourth. Wow. You know, but Jameis number one in the NFL, and you're talking about you know not just a quarterback in a good situation like Brees or Brady. You're talking about a 21 year old kid on the worst team in the NFL with no run game at all. You know, that's a that's a staggering stat. Um, as far as the red zone numbers, since he entered the league in 2015, he has a 20 to one touchdown to interception ratio in the red zone. Brady was at 18.9 to one. Rogers 18.6. Patrick Mahomes 17.3. Russell Wilson 16.1. So James blows them all away. I mean, this is not a quarterback that's just stupid who has a, a touchdown to interception ratio like that in the red zone. Um, it, yeah, I mean, it, the the numbers go on and on and on and on. And I've got more than anybody. Um, Another one, like highest career first down rate. So now you're covering first downs. You know, what's the most important thing to get first downs? Yeah. And you're, and you're covering third down and you're covering red zone, the highest leverage moment. So Jameis is the king of the NFL on third downs. He's great in the red zone. There, there may be a couple quarterbacks, you know, if the sample size is smaller, that have a better touchdown interception ratio, but he's great in the red zone. And then highest career first down rate on dropbacks. Peyton Manning, number one. Patrick Mahomes, number two. Jameis Winston, number three. And this is in the last, like, 20 years. You know, Drew Brees was number four. Yeah. So statistically, and especially when you look at, like, the advanced metrics, Jameis compares really well to just about anybody. And that's including guys like Mahomes when you, when you talk about, um, you know, the advanced metrics. One of the ones that, that's important anyways to me when I look at it is OVM, which it measures, you know, the amount of production a quarterback gets that is his own, that's totally on his arm, not on rack, not on yak, not on his receiver's work. Jameis uh, in 2017 was third in the NFL, 2018, second in the NFL, 2019, fourth in the NFL. So he's averaged third in the NFL. Damn. Patrick Mahomes, 15th in 2018, 17th in 2019, 31st in 2020. Now that isn't saying Mahomes is a bad quarterback, but that's saying Mahomes is a silver spoon quarterback who lives off his receiver's. Jameis was handed a ball and said, son, sling it. And you're not going to get any yards after the catch from your receivers, and he really didn't. <laughs> and you got to put it in tight windows. And then, you, you know, you can look at things like tight window throws and see Jameis is elite and all, all these things. So Jameis is your typical, you know, number one overall quarterback to the worst team who's just given the ball and told to sling it. And that, generally speaking, never works out well. Yeah. You know, Peyton Manning came into the NFL, 26 touchdowns, 28 interceptions. Yeah. You know, Jameis has never had a year throwing more interceptions than touchdowns. People want to kill him for the 30, but he's, he's never thrown more interceptions than touchdowns. And I often laugh at people when I say, well, you know, would you prefer he have thrown one less interception, but 13, <laughs> less, but, but 13 less touchdowns? Because that's what Favre did. Favre had a 20-touchdown, 20 29-pick year. And nobody kills him for it. Jameis had 33 and 30, and people act like he should be in the CFL. I mean, <laughs> dude, look. One of one. I love it, dude. I love it. I, I have so many more questions, but we have to go right now. We have to do this again. Look, our, our paths have crossed for a reason, okay? We are united in this fight. The Saints and Jameis Winston, we are as one, and the heights that will be reached will shake the foundations of the NFL. Uh, one of one. Thank you so much, man. I love it, man. You have a good day. All right, you have a good day. I mean, bro, come on now. I feel like uh, didn't Jesus one time spit in old boy's eyes and the scales fell out? And all of a sudden, he could see again. Yeah. I feel like he just got my eyes spit in. Feeling good right now, boys. Danny, sweeping the bucks. It's back on the table. Wrapping up off the bench next.